Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I, I lied again. Um, and it's not really, it's I, so yeah, last week I brought up if, you know, that Stephen King, um, what had some like ghostwriter stuff and he has been asked because, you know, he has a lot of, you know, stuff that he's written. Yes. Um, but what I was confusing it with was R.L. Stein, who actually, he claims he hasn't. You know R.L. Stein, the writer of Goosebumps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He claims he hasn't had ghost writers, but it's kind of like people have come forward like, no, like, we've, we've written a majority, the bulk of some of these books. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Because like, dude, cause he was like releasing a book a month, dude. What are you looking at? Or what did you look at? Uh, I was just curious. Uh, King has published 62 novels, including seven under the pen name Richard Bachman. Yeah, yeah. And 200 short stories. Yeah. Jesus. No, yeah, no, he's published a fucking lot. Oh my god, that's a lot. <laughs> I once, like, kind of ca- casually said, like, he's kind of like you know our modern day maybe like horror, like Shakespeare type guy. You know, he's like mm-hmm. written a lot of stuff. And someone who's like a huge Shakespeare like person was like, do not compare the poet to Stephen King. <laughs> and I was like, I will forever now <laughs> just to piss you off. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's personal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least you're catching him. I'm sure I've said some shit like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe that's what our our soft opens are going to turn into. Is like, and this is what I was wrong about last week, guys. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, that's not a bad thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> you want to lead us in? <laughs> this is Tommy. This is Jacob. This is Tommy, Tommy and Jacob's, Jacob's mixtape. I forgot to look at the camera. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together, ooky, the Adams family. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey <laughs> you didn't guess it, we were doing uh Adam's family. Hey, Adam's well, family. The, se- the sequel specifically. Yeah, but I mean, which you no, know, no, it's standalone. Like we were talking about this, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. It's like you the, don't need to watch one to watch the other. Yeah, you, at all. You can literally like watch any Adam, like at any point, any random Adam's family like thing, and it'll just be its own thing. Mm-hmm. Well, unless I don't know what the series might have, like you know, some do, do the cartoons. I don't remember the the new re, really the recently oh, animated the, ones. Oh, um, well, yeah, those kind of have more of a storyline because you you see how uh, Morticia and Gomez got together. Okay. Oh, so it's kind of like a prequel in the first one. Well, you see their wedding. Man, I really don't remember those. I don't particularly remember those either. I was definitely it was definitely playing on my television at one point. I've watched I've watched yeah. one. I've watched the first one, I think. I don't think I saw the second one. Fair. That's yeah. fair. Um well, yeah, we are doing the Adams Family Values and we are going into our Friends Giving block November. We're focusing on kind of more of like I idea, loose idea of Thanksgiving, but more it's like we're talking about friendships and families. The yeah. Family values. So we're, yeah, we're like, oh, we'll do Adam's Family to kind of ease out of the spooky season. Yeah. It's still kind of like a Halloween y movie, but. But this movie is also like, I saw, like, there's a, a IMDb uh, um, watch list thing, like one of their videos, and they're like, top Thanksgiving movies. And this was one of them. And another one that we have on our list is the number one, the one that we're ending this block with. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. And yeah. And the next two weeks, well, I forget what they are, but we'll get it. We'll get there. And if um, um, you haven't seen it, uh, synopsis. Synopsis. <laughs> that's funny. You did the. That's why I laughed when you wanted to do the song. Um, a creepy and spooky <laughs> family must stop a kooky nanny from stealing their family fortune. Because you had it all. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. So I mean, there's also that's one of the plot there's a lot more there's a lot more plot points of this than i remembered there being yeah i mean the i would say like the main plot point is the nanny is the nanny and then uh wednesday and pugsley escaping the camp yeah like yeah yeah oh and i guess the baby i don't know actually no that's that's there's a lot of <laughs> episodes within this movie i said boiled and brine i worked on the cat <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, 
Um, rating wise, this movie has a 6.8 on IMDb, a 7.4 tomato meter score, and a 63 audience uh, audience score. So you know, mm-hmm. mid high, mid high, which is fair, makes sense for this. Um, it came out November 19th of 1993, yeah, I that was which I, yeah, I was like, oh, it, it kind of came out around Thanksgiving time as well. Interesting. And it was a number 28 in the box office. So it's just like, you know, it, it was successful. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one was apparently a box office hit. I, didn't, I mean, I, didn't I, really, I forgot to look at that, but I that's didn't really do any research. Well, it was like, I was just like, I was reading as I was reading stuff is like the sequel to the blockbuster hit of the Adams family. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. Interesting. interesting. I know that we just did 93 not too long ago, but I recounted the movies and I got a different number. So I did too. What did you get this time? 35. I got 46. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. I got three more than last time because there was a couple of them I was looking. I'm like, oh, wait, is that that movie? Like, oh, yeah, I've seen that movie. Yeah, I got three less. That's weird. Yeah. Maybe you were finding like, no, but I definitely have not watched yeah, that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, there was definitely like uh, a couple of them. I was like, oh, I just didn't see the name of it or I didn't recognize it until I was like, saw it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, totally. But yeah, so we, we, well, we need to actually like... Uh, figure out what where we're going with this like tally we're supposed to be tallying them for the end of the year show and see who won yeah that's what we're doing mm-hmm. i knew that so we just have to did go, you guys know that do you write down you yeah. write down yeah okay yeah, so we I'm just have to that. go through them and no make I'm, a, I'm just remembering this number <laughs> you need to make a, like an excel sheet you know <laughs> yeah oh yeah we can make one in, in our in our, mm-hmm. in our drive okay um well i think before we go into maybe like specifically this movie director and whatnot. Let's go into who created the Adams family. Cause I know you did some decent, a little bit of research. I did. Um, the and, creator. Oh, yeah. go ahead. No, I was gonna say, and I did a little bit, but I think you have a little bit more to say. Um, yeah. So the Adams family is actually, uh, created by Charles Adams who passed away in 1988. Yes. Um, Charles was a longtime artist and specifically was an artist for the New Yorker. Um, the, and he did, um, these small little like one have you ever seen the new yorker there's just these like little illustrated jokes like, like one, one panel one panel yeah. like couple like um, lines far side yeah yeah um uh dennis menace farmer duke but they were first published in 1938 and then ran for pretty much a 50 year period which is pretty interesting um and also it's just it's just kind of interesting how long this how long the adams family's like had a dynasty and yeah in media and it's interesting is like apparently in like pop culture like it's been like stated like in the times magazine i'm gonna say i know it's stated somewhere that the adams family is the only other like like recognizable like most popular american family name other than the kennedys <gasps> like influential like family <laughs> in culture because like their whole thing of like turning um pop culture on it you know like the the structure of like what uh like popular like families were you know it's like yeah like yeah well it's also kind of interesting too i found the a fact that this was a little panel from the new yorker mm-hmm. and then watching this movie too there's a lot of more adult humor than i ever caught as a kid <laughs> yeah and it's like so funny because it's like that's kind of what the New Yorker would do too, you know? Mm-hmm, they have mm-hmm. these like light little comics, and they'd be talking about something pretty, either intense or adult or whatever yeah. it might be. Um, but it's just like you know, there there was the original '60s show. There's uh, two animated shows. There was another live action show. There have been now these two movies. Yeah. Now there's a two sequel. I mean, it's just been a long yeah. running. I mean, no, there. Yeah, the, oh, actually, I really want to. I want. I forgot that there was the musical, and I would love to actually. Take, oh, I didn't see that. I yeah, know there's a musical. It, uh, it was 2009. I want to say uh, uh, Nathan Lane recently played Gomez. Uh, I feel like that would tr- uh, Adam Sandler would transfer well into a musical. Yeah, no, it does. I feel yeah. like it would. I've heard. I think I've heard some of the music, but. Um, uh, apparently they didn't have like the only characters that had names were Morticia and Wednesday, um, starting in, like 1964 because they wanted to make some dolls. They wanted to make Wednesday and Morticia dolls. Oh. And then the characters weren't named until the show came out in like 1966. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So there were just the Adams family. Oh yeah. And, and like spooky and kooky. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, like a perfect example. Like, uh, I was looking up the. Some of them, and there's, you know, one of Morticia, they're in the kitchen, and Morticia is just looking in uh, one of the kids' uh, bags, uh, like lunch lunch bags to go to school, 
And the caption just says, you forgot the eye of Newt. Like, that's an example of, like, yeah. what was one of them. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Real light, simple little. I was really curious about where this inspiration came from for this show. He was, just for a, this... He was a kooky dude. Yeah, well, apparently he, like, when he first started working at the New Yorker, there's that Red Bull burp. Um, <laughs> he would um, uh, mask up pictures of murder victims. <laughs> like he would like make them look prettier for like a publication. <laughs> oh, I read that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was like, well, this guy's kind of morbid. Like, and he was like, and he even like, there's like a statement where he's like, I don't know why they want me to do this. They looked pretty beautiful as they were before. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> well, no, okay. it's, yeah, and it's interesting. And apparently, too, he was kind of a a, a socialite uh, lady killer. Like, he even dated a Kennedy, like, or oh, was wow. seen like going out with a Kennedy. And it's just what made me like laugh because he's Gomez. He's Gomez. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's this macabre kind of dark individual, but is totally suave with the ladies. I don't know. It's just like oh. cut me. Yeah, <laughs> cut him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just, I was, you should read about, he's an interesting, yeah, I mean, like the big, fella. the biggest thing I could find for like where his biggest inspiration for this, sh- for this was, was, uh, like, um, uh, it was inspired by his hometown of Westfield, New Jersey, an area full of ornate Victorian mansions and archaic graveyards. So it's just kind of like, that's all I, it's like, where it's like, what I'm just really curious. Like, is this like an extension of like what he felt like his family was the family that he wanted to have or well, even like, it's, he, like, it's like, it's so interesting that these are very rich, unique characters, you know? Well, and I think he like even this too. Um, so when Adams got married to his second wife, a practicing lawyer, she combined Morticia like looks with diabolical legal scheming. And she uh, wound up controlling the Adams Family TV show fa- and film franchise. And film franchise. Oh wow! So I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot of like, you know, because <laughs> he married her in '54. So I guess, and now I guess, well, yeah. Well, he had already started kind of doing the comics around that. Yeah, I know. But, but the thing at that point, uh, at this point, at '54, Morticia was not like a character. Like, uh, yeah. You know, like on the show and Unless stuff. he was inspired from his wife. Like, maybe that's just how she dressed and looked. Well, the one of thing is, like, so the comic started in 38. The show came oh, out that's in 64. Fair, yeah. He married her in... 50s. Uh, he married her 54. The show came out in 66. Yeah. So maybe some of that personality got into the Morticia, into the yeah, show. possibly. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Well... Well, so that's kind of like the history of the Adams family, which it's got a it's wonderful, cool history. It's very, if you don't know who the Adams family is, that I think I feel like you're just maybe too young, and you will eventually one day, because they're 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 just huge pop culture icons. Yeah, and yeah. they're just like this gothic macabre. Fa- ma- ma- well, it's interesting, is like people have done like uh, research on like or not really. I shouldn't say research, but um, uh, like dissected the Adams family and how it's kind of like this interesting thing is like these people who have very uh, opposite um, like views of like what it is like for like what is a normalcy. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Like. You know, they're about death, you know, like, and, you know, oh, they, they do everything opposite of what the traditional, the traditional American values are. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, but then on top of that, they are extremely supporting and loving parents. They, Gomez and Morticia are absolutely in love with each other constantly. Mm-hmm. So when you actually kind of look at the values of what a traditional American family was, it's kind of like, you know, back in like the thirties and forties, like you don't show that love around, you know? Yeah, but even then, too, like, a, you know, uh, Morticia's mom lives at the house. Yeah. Uh, they have their kind of weird uncle, the brother. Uncle can't, Fester. Can't really function on his own. He also, they take care of him, and he lives at the house. Mm-hmm. Even though, well, I guess technically the house is his, but yeah. he's... Well, that's part, that's part of yeah. the lore of the movies and whatnot, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting... Because, you know, like, even the... They're at the, the camp and the fresh air... The smell of pine, <laughs> you know, like he's horrified <laughs> at the, the, but you would be like, oh, this is so nice. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, and they're like, the dad says like, oh yeah, my, my uh, 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 scholar, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, and your son, he's like, on probation. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, our daughter skipped uh, two grades already. Right. How about you? 
probation. <laughs> He's all like <laughs> stoked about it. And then like when's uh, uh, Morticia's talking about Wednesday? Oh, she's at that time of age where she has one thing on mind. Boys, Boys homicide. homicide. Christina Ricci was great. She's so fucking. She is brilliant in this. She's like, really good. Wow. Um, all right, let's get into who directed and all that stuff, and we'll and talk more about this. Um, so someone we've already done, yeah, a while ago. So which, we don't have to talk too much about them. Yeah, I didn't mm-hmm. really realize that. I think we talked about that when, at when the we time. Talk, yeah. yeah, we were like, oh, interesting. Uh, do, do you not have it in front? I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> Barry Son and Phil. <laughs> But that was such a weird. Yeah, pause. sorry, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I had a brain. Yeah, hurt. Barry Sonnenfeld, uh, Field. Did I put that? Did I spell that wrong? Is it Feld or Field? Feld, F E L D. Okay, it is Feld. Oh yeah, we uh, we did it with him with uh, Wild Wild West, and um, that's it. And then he also directed you know Men in Black one, two, and three. So, uh, yeah, did a series of unfortunate ten episodes of the series of unfortunate yeah. event TV show. Um. RV with Ron Williams. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so let's go into writer. Um, Paul Rudnick, who he's actually, he's an all-around just writer-writer. He's mm-hmm. a novelist. He's a playwright. He's a screenplay writer. Um, actually, one of his movies, I, we, it's come up a couple of times, I want to say, I really want to find a block where we can do the movie In and Out with Kevin Klein. Because if you haven't seen it, I, I think you would love it. I, th- I, was, I want to do Stepford Wives. Step for Vibes, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. I love that movie. It was weird. <laughs> um, and then Sister, he wrote the first Sister Act, and uh, the movie Jeffrey kind of stood out to me because yeah, that's also a play. And it was like one of his like most notorious plays that then turned into a movie. Okay. Yeah, I don't Which know Jeffrey this... is a story about uh, uh, a homosexual man who is being celibate through like the late 80s, 90s because of the HIV pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so he's just choosing, he's like, I'm just not going to have sex because it's too dangerous, but it's kind of like a black comedy. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of people like Broadway didn't want to produce it. Cause like, how can you make a comedy about HIV? And he's like, well, I'm going to, like, well, that's, <laughs> that's the question. And then right? it like was a huge hit and they were like, Oh, okay. Um, but I did find this really amusing for his, um, uh, I looked up his Wikipedia just to see what he's done. And in personal life, it just says, Paul Rudneck is openly gay. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that's the only personal um, blurb we get about him. Remind me off mic to talk about in and out because I might have a movie you could pair with that. Word, cool. And it's a French movie. Okay. So, if... yeah, yeah. Just mental note. Okay. If you want to make a block out of that. Uh, Because I need to ask more questions about In and Out to see if they, you know, I mean In and Out's like a 100% comedy. Yeah, so is the one I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, so is the one. Okay, Uh, yeah, so that's. Um, So let's go into who this movie's starring because it's a pretty damn big cast, and we don't want to spend too much time focusing on everyone that's that's in the movie. But like, there is like a lot of names. It's like. It's just, it's crazy how many people are actually in this movie that have mm-hmm. had successful careers, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but let's just start off with the ma- with the Adams family. <laughs> the actual family members. Yeah. So we have uh, Angelica uh, Houston as Morticia. Um, mm-hmm. You might recognize her from Witches. Uh, she was in Cinderella Ever After. What was that? Ever After, the Drew Barrymore. Yeah. She's yeah. the... Uh, Isn't she like the the evil stepmother? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, she's pretty much she's in the Wes Anderson repertoire, yes. starting with Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah. She's been in pretty much every Wes Anderson film since. Yeah. Um, she just recently narrated the French Connection for it. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, was she married to Jack Nicholson? I don't. Know. I think she may have been because I've got. I look. I was looking at pictures of her from like when she was like in her in her youth and whatnot, like and whatnot. And there's a lot of pictures of her with Jack Nicholson. I mean, maybe. I don't know why. Like, I don't know why I saw that and I just didn't look it up. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know Jack Nicholson's dating history. Hey, well, that'll be our cold open next week. There we um, go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say it as a fact. I asked a question. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go into a uh, Raoul Julia. Mm-hmm. Um, cause, uh, rest in peace. He, like, I remember, I remember when he passed away, I remember it, my mom being really sad about it. Cause my mom had watched a lot of what he had done and she went, you know, really loved the Adams family movies because of him. He is an extraordinarily good Gomez. He's great. 
He is so I mean, good. At everyone this. has been is yeah. pretty well casted in this. Yeah, like, yeah. He's got those big bug eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, he passed away in '94. Um, kind of an interesting situation. He was battling stomach cancer, yeah. kind of quietly for many years. Um, at like I think uh, some kind of an award show, has some really bad pain. Got taken to the hospital. Uh, slipped into a coma, got put on life support. He had a stroke while, he, he, stroke, was, while yeah. he was in the hospital. Yeah, uh, got put and uh, slipped into a coma, put on life support, and then passed away shortly after. Yeah. Like, pretty, like... It was pretty quick, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's, it, he was um, uh, reading a script for... Oh, uh, what was it? Where is he at? Oh, that's for the neck. Oh, I don't have it open anymore. Never mind. He was reading a script. Like, he was supposed to be... He was cast in a specific movie that um, we've talked about, I want to say. But, anywho. Um, uh, but, yeah. Like the, like, yeah, no, he was, he was you know, oh. fairly young. Um, but, I don't... I think P, this is what he's probably most recognizable for, is the Adams Family Or movies. Street Fighter. And then Street Fighter <laughs> as M. Bison, which we are going to do that movie at some point. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to do a whole movie block. Yeah, then, like, that movie is a fucking trip. Like, goddamn, video game movies of the 90s are just so notoriously bad. <laughs> um, um, that's yeah. all I really recognize. I mean, there's this movie I've always wanted to watch called Kiss of the Spider Woman mm-hmm. uh, with Raul and William Hurt. Mm. Yeah. Sounds familiar. 1985. Um, what is it? A drama. Yeah. Um, well, let's go into next. Uh, Christopher Lloyd, my favorite as Fester. He's who, also great. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking fan. The howling at the beginning at the moon. He oh, just, he just did that 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 <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah he's just, um, he's when just there's so when Gomez is sitting in bed with him, they're like he's talking about uh, Deb, and he's like, Shh, sh- 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 <laughs> and then he's like, oh, what's this? Mom, mom, <laughs> or even so disturbing. Or like, all the years I've been watching you and Morticia through oh. crack doors and peepholes. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just like but Fester. Like it's like, <laughs> he's not like how d-? it's like no. I mean, did you catch um the fact that uh like, I don't know what else other word to describe this, but that he molests the uh, thing. Oh, the when Fester he, uses when he, thing yeah, for oh, sexual yeah, release. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I went, what? <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. When he's like, he's like, like, he's like, I just I don't want to touch. And he's like, well, that's what thing is for. Oh, so you have thing. And then he <laughs> cuts the thing and he's like shaking. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, whoa. I know. never caught that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so much. Oh, there's so oh, much. Even like when thing jumps onto Debbie's like, like shoulder and then like she kind of like, and a thing, yeah. I mean, but that's like it's like a that's like a, a seduction like sex joke. This was like a complete like. He's like he's terrified. <laughs> he's like not no, again. No, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but yeah, Christopher Lloyd. If you don't know who he is, uh, who framed Roger Rabbit, and he's Doc in the Back to the Futures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And, uh, uh, Christina Ricci. I was, I was just gonna say, and a good recommendation for Christopher Lloyd in more recent years is I am not a serial killer. Yeah. If you check that out. I've been meaning to watch that. Um, so yeah, uh, Christina Ricci, who plays Wednesday, we did talk about her during Cursed. Um, most recently, she's probably recognizable for being in the mo- in the show uh, Yellow Jackets. She's in Wednesday. Yeah, I haven't watched Wednesday no, I haven't yet. Either, so. But I was just. But uh, well, I don't know. It's, it's not like, released yet. I, oh, it's oh, that's right. It comes mm. out soon. Or, oh, it might be released by the time this. I, is when the, by the time this comes out, it's going to be. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Speed Racer. Yeah. Which I've been. Uh, what, what's what's her name? Tri- Trixie, is that right? Trixie? Trixie. Well, I'll tell you next week. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and then uh, really quick, uh, I guess uh, what's his name? Jimmy Workman. Yeah, Jimmy Workman who I plays didn't write Pugsley. Him down. That's weird. Um, fun thing with him. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, he hasn't really. Do- he's now. Now he's like more behind the scenes. He's more like crew, yeah. right? Yeah. Um. He he has his own like um kind of like. I don't want to say production company, but yeah, his sister, youngest sister is, um, April winter who plays, uh, 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 uh Alex Dumphy in modern family. 
That's his the middle sister. The middle sister yeah, and, yeah, and no, that's, Modern his, that's, that's his, his youngest sister. That's his sister. Okay. Yeah. And which I was like, oh, really? And there's a huge like weird like legal family thing that like came out. Like, I kind of I just pulled a picture of him, Jimmy. Like you young. can see it. I, I kind of see it actually. Yeah. No, you can yeah. totally see it. But apparently, like he like fought for trying to get like uh uh uh. uh um, not conversation or shit, but um, uh, guardianship over her because apparently she like went through a huge like like a bunch of problems with like their parents abusing her and like her money from the show of Modern Family and what. Oh, yeah, interesting. I'm um, a, a fun little Jimmy thing. I was looking at pictures uh, of Jimmy trying to see if there's something like I recognize him from mm-hmm. that like you know image other, my, my image might spark something. Other than this, yeah. Um, and I was just sitting there and I was like, when the fuck is MC Hammer? In Adam's family, and then I went. Wait a minute, the very end, of the song. Yeah, you know, but I'm like, and wait, and Chris Farley, it's an SNL skit. But oh, they're, yeah, they're yeah. in costume. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was just like, <clears throat> I do not remember MC Hammer being in this movie. And then wait, wait, how's Chris Farley's in this? Like, wait, what's going on? Yeah, he, yeah, he had he didn't host an SNL, but he was like, well, it's the end song too, right? Yeah, yeah. the Adam's family rap. Yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> up with the fucking early '90s and? Bad hip hop. Um, and then um, just because we've done uh, honorable men- honorable mention to Carol Kane, who plays Granny. Mm-hmm. Um, she was the uh, Ghost of Christmas present uh, present in Scrooge. Yep, yep, yep. Um, she's in the Princess Bride. Yeah, and she always plays like you know the kind of quirky because she's the the wife of she's married to Billy Crystal, right? In the Princess Bride, yeah. Bride, yeah. When he's like, he said true love, liar, uh, her, liar. Uh, liar. She just got. I'm not a witch. I'm your wife, and after that, I don't even want to be that anymore. (laughs) Yeah. She's got a very unique voice, and you know. I mean, to this day, I've seen Scrooge so many times, but when she hits Bill Murray with a toaster, (laughs) kills me every. No, that entire scene because she kicks him in the balls. She kicks his ass. Like, (laughs) like, oh look, Frank, what is it? It's a toaster. (laughs) Every it gets me every time, and I've seen that movie for now thirty years. (laughs) It gets me every time. Uh, um, and then I definitely needed to talk, uh, say Joan Cusack, who's our, uh, our femme fatale in mm-hmm. this, um, which we haven't talked about before, but she's, you know, um, I, I want to say, uh, maybe the most recognizable now is the voice of Jesse in Toy Story. Like movie. I didn't know that. Yeah. She's Jesse in Toy Story. Man, oh, no, I mean, I know that now, oh. but I, when I was doing research, I didn't know that. Fun. She's in the, she's in the movie in and out. She's Kevin Klein's fiance. That, yeah. I looked it up. Um, and uh, she's, re- I don't know, kind of more recently, her big role was like uh, in Shameless. She was like Frank. Oh, I forgot she was in Shameless. Yeah. 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 When you think, of, what, what movie comes to mind when you think of Joan? I think of Shameless. You think of Shameless? I think of Toys with Robin Williams. I haven't seen that in a very, very long time. She's- um, I do think of like some of the earlier, like John. It's sad. It's like you say Joan Cusack and I unfortunately immediately think of her brother, John. I understand that too, but also I think a little bit of that's right because they're also in a lot of movies together. They are in a lot of movies together. Like she's in High Fidelity with him. She's in like The Martian. Yeah. Like she's. Yeah. It, and a lot of times they play siblings. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, so it's like, I think that's. I, 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 but I, I get it's it. like my brain goes to Shameless and my brain goes to Toy Story. And then I got to say, this, I think this is one of her best. I love yes. her. Love her well, it's in so this. interesting is like, I. I don't think I realized that it was Joan Cusack for the longest time because it's so it's so out of character of what she plays a lot yeah, of the time. But she plays this so she does a gr- she's so fucking good in this. She's really really like when she first when she first fails on killing Fester, and like when she's sitting in bed and like Fester's talking about going back home and there's there's grandmother and Gomez and and she's like mother down the hall. Oh God, <laughs> yeah. Like realize like what is that? oh. Like, okay, how do I, how do I seduce him now? <laughs> um, and then really quick, uh, I guess like this, the quick, quick, I'm going to credit uh, fire this off. Um, Wednesday's uh love interest, David Krumholtz. Um, he's really popular for being like some Judd Apatow stuff. Uh, he was in numbers. Um, uh, I think he's his ten re- things re- I hate about you. 10 things I hate about you. Thank you. Yeah. Is younger. He had a lot of stuff in his younger times. Slums of Beverly Hills. Um, I, I, every, he's one of those actors. Whenever I see him, I'm like, I like this guy, mm-hmm. and I just, you know, he also hasn't aged a day. <laughs> he's, well, he's just gotten thicker. Well, it's like Christina Ricci. Also, like they look, yeah, facially, like yeah. they don't look really any different. Um, and then the two camp counselors. Oh wait, no, no, no. Sorry. Quick shout outs to Carol Strucken who played Lurch. 
Yes, um, uh, Alien and Men in Black that has mm-hmm. the nebula. Yeah, or whatever. And then just fun to say, Christopher Hart, um, who does the hand, uh, does thing, the hand for thing. Mm-hmm. He was also the hand in Idle Hands. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like a magician. Yeah, yeah, like hand model. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, the, sorry, the camp counselor is now Peter McNichol, who Ghostbusters 2. He's the one that gets possessed. Mm-hmm. Um, he has, he was also an Ally McBeal as a love interest, which I think is, you know, a straight, I don't know. I never watched Ally McBeal. Um, Christine Barinsky, who, uh, most notably in my mind, I think of her as Sheldon's mom in the Big Bang Theory. Mm-hmm. But she's also, I want to say, the, uh, what really, is this? Chris, uh, the other, the female camp counselor. Oh, um, Martha May Lou, who. From yes. How the Grinch Called Christmas. Thank you. Yeah. Martha May Huvier. Martha May Huvier. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Sam McMurray, who plays the Buckman father. Um, he, I, he's Chandler's boss. boss. Yeah, and, and friends. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> Smack him on the ass. Um, Harriet Sampson Harris, who I just want to do a shout out. Because, uh, she's the mother of uh, the Buckman mother. She's in Werewolf at, by Night. That uh, black and white Marvel mm-hmm. one. She's the uh, uh, the the mother. The mother, yeah. Mother. Um, Which because when I was wa- I was sitting there watching that movie, or I guess and who's, like and who's short mo- movie. Whose mom is this? It's uh, uh, the blonde girl's mom. She reminded me a lot of Catherine O'Hare. She looks like if you got Catherine O'Hare off Wish a little bit. <laughs> I was gonna say like maybe her sister. <laughs> okay, you're gonna be a dick about it. <laughs> no, but yeah, she reminded me a lot of Catherine. She O'Hare. had yeah, no, hundred like percent, yeah. a lot. Yeah. But like when I was watching Werewolf by Night, I was looking at her. I'm like, why does this woman look so familiar? Mm-hmm. And even like I went to IMDb and I looked her up and I just like kept like. And then finally, I saw Adam's Family Values, and then pff, all of it just like images just rushed through my head. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. And then the daughter, uh, Mercedes McDab, um, she the uh, she's like Wednesday's nemesis. Arch, oh, arch nemesis, yeah. Um, she was a, a really she was a um, a reoccurring vampire in the Buffy and Angel series. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I gotta take off my watch. It keeps hooking onto my fucking thing. Fucking loser. Sorry. <laughs> no, it keeps no, it keeps cut, catch onto this. Bit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I yeah, keep yeah. jerking it down. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah, see that, and there's just a lot of other really small cameos. Nathan Lane, um, oh, yeah, Tony yeah. Sh- uh, yeah, which I find is amusing because he's he played Gomez, he's played Gomez now. Anywho, um, I just, I'm always happy to see Nathan. No, Lane. Nathan Lane's great. Or like he's just also that whole scene when he's explaining, my brother's been seduced by a woman. Oh no, I hate when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like also like when he gets arrested, it's like hook him, book him, and cook him, like. What did he do wrong? <laughs> he just made a stick. Out of public disorderly conduct? I don't know. It was fucking funny. Anywho. Um, uh, yeah, there's a, a big, weird cast. Wonderful cast. Everyone's fucking wonderful in this movie. Um, I think we're ready to move into your reviews, though. All right. Um... <sighs> I feel like I rushed through. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so um, review of wise, this has ten positive, eleven mixed, and zero negative. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I do. Hold on one second. Okay, I just want to pull it up. <laughs> okay, so for positive, um, a hundred out of a hundred worth. Uh, Edward Guthman from the San Francisco Chronicle. Adam's family uh, values is so much better than the first film, partly because Sonfeld, who made his directing debut with the first film, has re- uh, refined his directing chops, but mostly because Rudnick has contributed a delightful mock macabre script. And that was just okay. kind of like, because like, I picked that one because it was the 100. Um, another, and since we don't have a negative, I was just going to read like a. That makes me wonder if maybe the first, the first movie didn't have as many like quick little bits. Because I don't remember the first one very well, but this is filled with a lot of like, like, like a cartoon. Like, no, it's the first one still does. It does okay. Yeah, it still has that like kind of DNA to it. Um, I kind of find the first one's story more interesting personally, with like Fester and Amnesia yeah. and all that. Um, 
80 out of 100, uh, Deborah Peterson, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Snappy writing, excellent acting, and sharp editing make this comedy zing as the Adams Family finds love, lust, and lynching growing in the midst. Um, I just want to get through these because I feel like we're running behind. We're not running behind. We're on a good time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, mixed uh, with a 60 out of 100, Angie Arago at Empire. Um, it is a rare feat to make a sequel better than its predecessor, but here Sonfield manages to do just that. With such a strong adult cast, it comes as a surprise when the children steal the show. With such a dry and morbid humor, it feels uh, um, excuse me, it feels that at times he was filming more for the parental viewers than the children's. Which I like I'm like, yeah, but that's also to me that's a good family movie where you can hide Yeah. Well and I, stuff. That- I feel like the nineties and like early two thousands is just like the heyday of like this is a family movie with a lot of adult content that goes over the kids' heads. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like well, like that the 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 thing. The yeah, thing, no, thing. Well, that. But then, like, <laughs> I think about like liar, liar. You know, that movie is clearly directed towards more of like a children family oriented thing. But that movie has a lot of adult humor in it. I mean, even Ace Ventura. Oh, one hundred. Well. I don't know if the first Ace Ventura, I would say, is directed for like family, family kids. No. The second one feels a lot more like it is. It does. It does. There's a lot more like, you know, like the snot joke. There's yeah. a lot more kind of like gross like yeah, 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 humor yeah. like that. The birthing out of the right. <laughs> oh, God. That's a great one. Mayday! <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, let's keep going. And I'm just going to do, let's see. I'm just trying to like... I'm looking at the lowest ones because that's like the negative. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really happy that there was no negative. But it makes sense. I know I'll get when I talk about this as well. Um, Richard Shekel gave it a 40 out of 100 writing for time. Like the first of the Adams Chronicles, this is an essentially lazy movie, too often settling for easy gags and special effects that come that don't come to any real funny point. And then a lot of these kind of lower ones talk about. I'm just gonna sounds like it wasn't his. It's not his vibe. Yeah, a lot of them talk about like there's like read like two that they're like the, the trying to kill the baby joke went on too long, like stuff like that. <laughs> but I mean, I like it. I mean, I didn't. Children, what are you doing? Playing. Yeah, I don't know. Sibling rivalry. <laughs> oh yeah, like that—that's a good one. I hated you and I despised you. <laughs> one time I tied him to a tree and took out four of his permanent teeth. <laughs> one time when he was asleep, I took out his brains. brains. You did. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, so after watching this, I kind of was like. I, why? Why are we reviewing this? This is just wonderful. This is like, you know, it's like, it's like, I don't really have much negative to really say about this movie or even like, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's hard to review. Like if anything is like, yeah, the special effects for this movie, you know, they're dated because, but they did really good job for what they had for fucking 1993 as well. I'm like, yeah, it came out 30 years ago. Yeah. (laughs) Um, like, what did I write? So I was like, uh, its humor is cartoonistic and it fits in the world that it creates. You know, even the absurd nature that even the absurd nature inherently works for this film. Well, that's a good you know? point. And like structurally, it moves the story along, but again, it just works. You know. Well, yeah, like in two notes to that. First, the structural story thing because there are like these three like there's these three things that are happening. Like this movie's only an hour and a half, and it feels a little bit longer because you have yeah, but not in a bad way. No, no, no. But it's like you have the kids dealing with the baby, you have the evil nanny, you mm-hmm. have the camp. Like it's like it all. It really does feel like it's like almost it's this episodic kind of film. Well, it's an interesting thing. Is like when like the what I would say is like kind of like the um, ultimate uh, like conflict that happens is when um, pubert, yeah, pubert uh, gets possessed by good, good, you know. <laughs> Yeah, he could become president. <laughs> Take me. me. Um, um, this movie is so quotable too. Fuck. Well, it's also it's, like, but, but like that's like the family's in disarray. 
And so it's like every it's like from Debbie, she has split this family apart and it's about them finding coming back together. Well, and it's also like the Oh, the it's like you were saying, like it's built in this world where it's like the atoms have undisclosed superpowers and you kind of yeah. just go with it. Like it's like, are they undead or are they not super? What? Like, and they are like supernatural because granny's always doing curses and spells yeah. and stuff. And Morticia just really wishes she had, I mean, like any modern woman, I want it all, but I wish I had more time for my demonic conquests or whatever she says. Did you, know? you notice like, like during like every single time it was like a close up with Morticia, just like the glam light over her face. Yeah. It's a Dracula joke. Yeah. Yeah. And I found it amusing when they were, when Debbie and her were sitting across from each other, there was that on Morticia's face and her eyes. Mm -hmm. And then for Joan, for a uh, Debbie, it was all on her cleavage. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. It was like she was like hypnotizing them with her breasts. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't notice that. <laughs> also, I love all that. Like when Debbie's like talking about murdering everybody, Morticia's just like, oh. They're, oh, they're all understanding. Yeah. They're all just like, but what about you? <laughs> I got Malibu Barbie. I'm not. Oh, that, that killed me. Uh, I'm, I'm a ballerina. I'm delicate. <laughs> just, so brash yeah, and yeah, angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was good. Um, I but, mean, like uh, the so something that we should like probably bring up too, in a really like hard way and a very nineties way. The the play at the camp. <laughs> I was like, I'm not really sure how to talk about this. <laughs> but, da, 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 da. Eat me. But well, I see. It's interesting, is like because I mean, as we all now uh, are very much aware in our adult age, the first Thanksgiving dinner was probably a fucking hack. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the word for it. <laughs> that's how I describe it. Uh, like you know, the the pilgrims or you know first settlers and the you know indigenous natives didn't really get along. They did like there there were like. They, I mean, there were some tribes and like, you know, first settlers that did, you know, get along like they taught like how to harvest and stuff, well, and, you know, but. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, this when this came out, do you think that they did that? Like they're like, oh, by the time we're done with this, it's going to be like November. Maybe we should add the kids at summer camp doing a Thanksgiving giving play i i don't know like i think that just kind of feels like I, a thing. honestly what i think it is is it was just like paul rudnick having this idea of what is a silly way that i can actually bring up the howering truth of what happened to native americans in our country that's masked by this idea of thanksgiving dinner but the whole thing is like with the count at the camp the counselor, he's writing a story about joy and happiness and fa and people coming together. And that's what Thanksgiving was, uh, has, was supposed to be, this, you know? And then, of course, Wednesday and the Adams families who just see the truth in, in behind the, the, you know, the, the facade. The facade. Like, it's like she comes forward and says, like, no, you murdered my people. And now we get ours, you know? So I, it's kind of like, I think it's just like a, it's a fun thing of like, you don't see it at all possible being an afterthought that was like, oh, we could maybe. Oh, like maybe it could have been like a, oh, when like, like think about when to release it. Like, oh, well, this Thanksgiving, let's yeah, possibly let's add this little thing. I don't think it's an, bit. A, it's not an add to Thanksgiving bit because they don't know when the movie's going to release. It's an it's, idea. It's not like they were like, oh, it's not a complete shot in the dark. They have an idea of when it's yeah. going to release. But I, it's like, I don't think it's more of like a, oh, we're releasing in November. Oh, let me write this Thanksgiving bit. I think it was kind of more like we have this movie, we're going to film it. And then, oh, well, actually, this kind of fits. If, like if we actually do, like if it ends up in November, that fits really well. Because also it's funny. It's like, it's interesting that this is a uh, Thanksgiving kind of movie. And like a lot of people say, because of this bit. Yeah. And this movie takes place during point. the summer. That's my point, though. 
like, was that like a marketing thing? Like, oh, we can make a Thanksgiving movie if we had a fucking Thanksgiving play. That's my point. I think that we just, just read so much about producers and stuff getting involved in doing weird little decisions like this to help. Like it, this is like hashtag before hashtag. But I don't feel like the producers really had like it, this isn't. I don't feel like this is like a producer driven project like that. Does that make sense? I do find it weird that in this and Men in Black the credit fonts are the same. I just realized that. But anyways, that's, that might be a Barry Sonnen film. That just kind of like thing, you know. Yeah. I, yeah, that's I, I, that's really yeah, nice, interesting, nice, right? nice sketch. Yeah. yeah, right. They're very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, he probably has a very similar. Like, like he has probably has a specific team that he works with. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but yeah, no, it's, it is interesting that this like because this technically isn't like it's a Thanksgiving okay. movie. It's not at all. <laughs> you know, but because of this fun bit. And the truth of what happened to the Native Americans. Well, and to give like context to anyone that doesn't know, it's like, yeah, so it's that summer camp and we have these two peppy go happy campers uh, or camp, camp counselors, counselors um, that are also kind of like secretly dicks. Uh, like one of my favorite ones is when they're in the, the Harmony Hut and they put <laughs> you know what you're what's his butt in there. <laughs> yeah. And like, what'd you do? And he's like, I wouldn't ride a horseback. And I wouldn't ride horses, and they're like, "Oh, that's it." And I wouldn't build a birdhouse. I just want to read. And he's holding a brief history of time. It's yeah, he, Stephen like, Hawking. Yeah, and he pops his head back, and he's like, yeah. "Not in my time, time four, four eyes." eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> I was like, I died because well, like, it was like so like you're because they were like totally fine at that. They were just annoying and peppy, you know. Yeah. But like at that, you're like, oh, they're kind of like total dickheads. <laughs> like, okay, got it. But that got me really good. I found myself a lot like as I haven't seen this movie in so long. I was I was in I was in a lot of just pure enjoyment watching. This I movie. was laughing a lot more than I thought, and yeah. I think it's fun to watch it as an adult to yeah. catch these little yeah you know like it smell like paint in here. Oh, it's, it's the vent. Yeah. Okay, well, it was like smelled like weed earlier. Yeah, I was like yeah. Anyway, sorry guys, <laughs> we don't we have some weird ventilation. We're getting poisoned. Save us. Um, oh no, it does. Yeah, it smells like paint. Right. So, so I think someone, it's probably coming from yeah, Blake. Yeah. 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 Um, Jesus. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, it's got really much shit suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> like, Someone's trying to kill us. Huh, quick, huff it. Um, um, but yeah, no, this, uh, yeah, it's, I don't really have much to really like, I feel like the structure of this, of this movie is really well done. I feel like it leans really well into, um, the absurdity of who the Adams family are in their jokes. And, putting them into situations that are outside of their element, which is how that's how you create good comedy is you have what these characters normal lives are, which is the macabre and all that stuff. And then you put them in an element where that is not their, it, that's not their element. And you watch them, you know, live in that world and destroy that world because that world that is, it, it's a, it's a representation of like the world that we live in is false and a facade. Yeah. And they are there to tear that down. Uh, or, even yeah like i just had this like it's just also like you're saying it's really cool like quotable yeah i watched enough to like get into like perfectly but like when they're confronting debbie for taking over like fester's life and morticia's like like basically like tricking a man with your sexual prowess i can respect that but one thing i can't respect pastels yeah that's right really <laughs> like <laughs> yeah god mm. yeah like it's just one of those things too is like from just well and it's sorry i, I was just gonna say from like i can't like i can't like each one of the characters is iconic you know yeah. you have gomez the lady killer suave romantic dancer lover you know F- also fighter you know <laughs> you can throw knives and catch him with his teeth and sword fight and then you have morticia who is the the almost like the black cats, you know, like mm-hmm. slick and very like kind of flowy through seductress. the room. seductress. And mm-hmm. then you have Fester, like the the torture and demolition guy. That can, my name is Fester. Right? It means rot. <laughs> you know, it's like they are they in their own way like made the characters so iconic because they were so perfectly casted. Yeah, and the, it's just they're fun to watch. Like Christopher Lloyd as Fester was just a stroke of like genius. It's like, yeah, I can't think of anyone, especially in the mainly the '90s. I don't want to do now, but I can't think of anyone in the '90s that could have played Fester better. Yeah, and even with oh with you, oh, there's one person who? that may have Dana Carvey. Mm, no. Also, because I was going to say with 
Lloyd and Raul because of their their chemistry is and also just their structure. They yeah. look like they actually could be brothers in a weird way. Yeah, that's fair. They yeah. both have the kind of big round eyes and they have really expressive faces. <clears throat> well, and... also Christopher Lloyd's a large guy. He's not a small dude. He's not. No. He's like tall. Yeah. So is he like hunched over? Like? No, he's he's like hunched. Yeah. No, he completely physically transformed for Fester. Yeah. Well, yeah. And he's got like the black between his teeth and yeah, yeah. And so I think Christopher Lloyd. I mean, he might be more like your size. You know. All right. I don't know. I missed the chance to meet him. I'm still yeah. saying it. Um, I'd like, like, I was really curious what the reviews were going to be because I was really just like, man, if someone just kind of talks about like the ridiculousness of like, you know, the baby at the end saving or whatnot, or just like that, it's a strange like deus ex machina, but it's just kind of like, uh, it's just, it, it's, it's absurd. It's just like the Adams family are an absurd family. And the absurdity of the film just lends itself to it. And one thing that I find interesting is like they're like like Debbie, who is the serial killer who should essentially fit in perfectly with the Adams family, is blind to see who they really are in a lot of ways. Well, because she's yeah, it's like I mean she's got the murderer thing and mm-hmm. like that. I love that she's always in white too. Just like contrast. Yeah. Of them, you know. Well, it's because she is materialistic and the Adams family aren't. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. She wants to kill for money. They just like dead things and <laughs> macabre, you know. Um, I did realize, I just realized something kind of Did you bake about these reviews. the cake with her still oh, in there? That poor girl. Say la vie. Say la vie. <laughs> um, I just caught something kind of weird about mm-hmm. these reviews. Mm-hmm. This last one, I was just looking at them again. Uh, by uh, by Jesse Hasenberg at Polygon, by zeroing in on the one on, on the eldest Adams child, the new Adams family too exposes just how clunky and wrong-headed it, its take on Wednesday is, and what the animated movies get wrong about the family in general. And I was like, interesting. The animated movies, Adams Family Two, the animated one somehow got mixed up into your reviews, family values. Yeah, and I was like. I read the ones from the right movie, right? Yeah, no. November 19th, 1983. Okay, so... <laughs> one of one of the reviews got mixed in. That's interesting. I mean, it makes sense because, you know, it's the sequel to... You know, it's a sequel. Yeah. You know, they're both... Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I, I don't really have much else to really say about this, you know? I mean... Well... I mean, it's a wonderful movie. Watch it. You know? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's really it's fun, and it's like I always think too, if especially if you're around. I mean, I guess age. like how does it fit into our block right now? How would you feel? Just like because is it just that that scene that the, the thing? No, no. Yeah. One of the reasons we picked it too is to talk about that kind of like the joke that is. But yeah. we're talking about family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this whole block is going to be like about, what is your family and like you know. Yeah, this is going to be about like this whole block is going to be about like family you make a strange families that have been fixed your family values yeah yeah literally it's just going to be about what you because it's like you know we don't we're not like thanksgiving like no we're not going to do thanksgiving movies but a lot of like now too a lot of people use this time of year november especially tr- transplants you yeah. know with their surrogate families that they make exactly you know, they they make a family and celebrate the holidays together because they can't be with their their parents or their siblings or whatever so yeah. it's just kind of movies about what is family and yeah what do you make of it how do you value it good story bro <laughs> i'm just so tired sorry i know that's fair i didn't go, i didn't fall asleep till like seven o'clock this morning uh yeah it was about like four or five for me i just couldn't get comfortable it was just one of those days that's rough um I mean, I get one of the highlights in this movie, in my opinion, is Christina Ricci. I think she's like her and Raul Julia and Joan Cute. I fuck everybody's great in this movie, but Christina Ricci was my first celebrity crush. She was one of my early ones. That's for damn sure. Casper. I love when they're announced. I was born in '92. Everybody, so just yeah. <laughs> I was born in '86. So it's like being weird. <laughs> we're not being weird. We're 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 still kind of young. Well, I was like, one of my early, early crushes was Kirsten Dunst, you know, and like seeing her in Small Soldiers. I was like 10 and she was oh, like 14. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, she was. Yeah. I remember having a crush on her in that yeah. too. Um, but like, I just, I love the close ups with her face when she's like, 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 like 
the the girl's drowning amanda amanda buckner is drowning like pretending to drown like i'm gonna be an actress i'm dying <laughs> and she says like i can't swim <laughs> or, or like uh, the know what we should do today we should clean our rooms. <laughs> Pulls out the devil puppet for your immortal soul. And then she even makes the puppet like, like, <laughs> I don't know. I wonder if that was actually her controlling it. I, it feels like that's an extra step to just not have her do. Yeah, that's fair. That's that fair. motion. You yeah, know that's what I mean? fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, but, you, or like when they announce that she's going to play Pocahontas and just like, you see her fingers. <laughs> um, it's yeah. Just, yeah, it's like really. I mean, I do think the, I do think the whole little baby trying to kill the baby thing kind of went on too long. And I really thought, yeah. I thought that one thing I would have liked would have been more attempts to kill Fester. Oh, from uh, Debbie. Yeah, like just some like like showing how creative she can get with these accidental deaths. Well, okay, but that's the thing is like she's never experienced someone survive it yeah no but like let it be fun to watch her like play around with but, it so I, it's kind of like yeah that's that would be amusing. like I, you could get really more looney tunes with this but i think this movie lives in a perfect blend of like the looney tunes that it is like uh, yeah but i mean just pull back a little bit on the baby and use that time to do a little bit more of fester because fester is like like indestructible basically yeah no. <laughs> you know he's a creature <laughs> oh god that's such a funny line it's like mess sad, but no one could love you. You're the missing link. You should be studied. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, thing driving is the most ridiculous. Thing. I knew <laughs> you were gonna bring that up. It was and so fucking stupid. My retort is: it is a disembodied hand that can see and travel on its own, and you're gonna draw the line at driving a fucking car i'm not saying that like oh fucking this is so st-. Like, like oh that's stupid how can that fucking happen i'm saying oh my god this is so stupid and i love it okay i thought you're like that was like your no shut up your line of reality shut up. <laughs> I was like, no there is no line of reality in this movie are you kidding me fester dies it did, it did gets though blowing up and he's it still did, alive i did show that thing like th- he he's driving and, and then, he, then he jumps down yeah. to get the gas and then he jumps back up which i like that idea of he's like i'm like that that'd be exhausting right <laughs> i don't want to that's terrible all right how many carrots uh three three really yeah like it's fine like i think it's like enjoyable i think because of what this movie is and uh like it leans it it's so, it knows its identity perfectly i'll give it a three and a half i was gonna say four honestly i'll give it a three and a half i, I think, think it's like, like fine like i don't think it's it's one of those, it's just one of those things too. I don't know for like, I, I always, I kind of go a little bit lower with nostalgic movies too, because they're nostalgic to me. And I'm like, objectively, no, I think this is a very fine movie. Like, I think it's very enjoyable. Your guys, that, that first review there wrote that, that, that you read that there was, that was the 100. Mm-hmm. I agree a lot with that. I just, I don't think it's like a, a, a perfect movie. I don't think it's a 100 out of 100, mm-hmm. but it's definitely, it knows what it is and it doesn't shy away from it. It has wonderful performances that are memorable, super quotable. The story structure fits well with it as it just kind of carries along in its way. Like, yeah, no, this is a re- this is a well-crafted, good movie. I'd say it's a four out of five, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, like, I'm just surprised that you say three because you gave uh, last week's, you gave Carrie a three. And this is light years better than Carrie. I don't, no, I don't. I think they're like both just like, they're very fine and enjoyable, but I just think they're like, yeah. I mean, and I, I love these movies, but yeah. I think objectively, I just think like rating wise, it's like a, like, yeah, like a three, three and a half. Fair. I would say three and a half because yeah, I give it that half because it's very like aware of what it is and mm-hmm. it's comedy is. And also I like that kind of morbid comedy. Yeah. A lot, but it's just like, yeah, I just think it's like a, it's a pretty, pretty okay movie, but it's like, I could also, if someone's like, I really don't like this movie. Like if someone's like, this movie is the biggest piece of shit, I would be like, calm down. But if someone's <laughs> like, I'm not really a big fan of this movie like really at all i'd be like i get it like i get why you're not yeah it's sometimes it's like that last one of those last reviews you read where it's like oh you're this is apparently just kind of not 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 your thing not your cup of tea and that's why i'm like it's right in the middle because i feel like it's kind of is like kind of in a camp you either like this kind of style the kind of you know you like it's one of those like you'll like this if you like if you like beetlejuice yeah 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 if you like what's another like good like i had a couple that i came in here just tim burton 
I feel like Tim Burton. Well, like more of like, you know, like even like Michael Keaton, like in Beetlejuice has like a lot of adult jokes. Yeah. You know, he like looking up the skirt. Oh, mm. why? Why am I doing that? You know, he's like, or like the, I uh, lived through the Black Death, uh, had a really good time during that. You know, like that kind of like dark humor. Yeah. So it's like, if you like that kind of stuff, then I think you like it. But if you don't like, don't like, you don't like it, you don't like it. Yeah. And I get that. So yeah, three and a half for me. But I mean, it's still, it's still one of my favorite movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I love the whole, the both. Both of them, I think they're really funny. No, yeah, they're, I mean, yeah, that's what I'm. It's like, yeah, that's uh, that's why I'm, I give I'm giving I give it a four. Oh, and like all that, you yeah. were saying, like in the first one, like with the little skits too, like he. The, oh yeah. The lawyer's trying to find. Well, it's like I just don't remember the first one. Well, to it, save my life. Well, like an example of like the Looney Tune thing. Yeah. He is trying to find the secret book to open the bookshelf, and oh, he picks yeah. up Gone with the Wind, and it blows. And in it, his, yeah, yeah, like right. causes a tornado. <laughs> I forgot about yeah, that. So yeah, so like it still has that very like Looney Tune kind yeah. of feel to it, but. Yeah. I mean, check it out. What are we doing next week? I can't remember. Do you want me to look it up real quick? Oh, well, perfect timing. Mm-hmm. Um, I will look it up real quick because I have it right. 50-50. We're doing 50-50 next week. Okay. Yes, we're doing 50 we're getting sad. <laughs> it's a dramedy. It's a dramedy. Um, I haven't seen it, I think, since uh, I saw it in the theaters. I, we were talking about it. I don't think I've seen it all the way through. Yeah. So we'll check that out. I'm really curious how you're going to feel about Anna Kendrick in it. Hmm. Oh, is she the girlfriend? No. No. Okay. Well, awesome. So I don't know anything about this movie. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Jessica and Levin and Seth Rogen's in it. Yeah, I know that. Go. I know that much. Um, yeah, cool. Um, um, this is Tommy? Oh, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> like and subscribe, <laughs> YouTube, tired. all that stuff. Uh, follow us on Instagram, um, uh, da, 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 Facebook. And all that stuff. I forget. Oh yeah. Oh wait. Wait a second. What are we? We're a podcast. Spotify, <laughs> Apple. Just, just let's just fucking end it. <laughs> just look at our link tree. It's got all the stuff on there. <laughs> hey, that's actually the best way to say it. We have link a, trees in the bio. Follow our link. It's in the bio, and it's got all the stuff on there. Uh, this is Tommy. This is Jacob. This, this is, is Tommy, Tommy and Jacob's, Jacob's mixtape. Mix I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs>